This is a report of the Scolia for Software project. Thank you, Alfred P. Sloan Foundation, for sponsoring this. How do you do? My name is Lane Raspberry. I am Wikimedian in residence at the School of Data Science at the University of Virginia. Scolia for Software was a project to incorporate software profiling functionality into Scolia. Scolia itself is a Wikipedia platform tool which generates scholarly profiles. A scholarly profile is a human readable panel with tables and data visualizations that helps somebody quickly understand some scholarly topic. Just so that everybody understands, I'm gonna give some examples. A scholarly profile of a researcher at a university could be the list of all the papers that they've ever published. Uh, some information about the topics on which they publish, which if you have data about what is the subject of the paper, you can start profiling that. Their research network, their co-author network, who do they frequently collaborate with, what tools do they use to do their research, and what journals have they published, perhaps what awards have they won. Whatever kind of professional data there is about researchers and their work, that goes into a scholarly profile. And if you have this data, you don't just have to profile, you don't have to profile it by authors. You can profile it from other perspectives as well, like start with a topic and find out who's been publishing information on this topic, or start with a university and you get a profile of what kinds of research happen at that university. There's a lot of variations once you have the data. So the Scolia for Software project, we already had this tool, Scolia, it's pretty cool. It does certain kinds of profiling. We wanted to add more features to it so that you can also understand the the position of research software in, in the field of research. To, to do this project, we needed data which connected software to research projects. That, that's part one of the project. Part two is we needed to add the functionality to the Scolia tool so that it can profile this data. Once the data is available to be profiled, the, the tool actually has to profile it. Once the tool is able to profile software data, we want to multiply the impact of the entire project by incorporating that profiling ability into things that are not software. Like, for example, if you're profiling a human, you want to know what software they use as compared to just profiling the software, software purely, which would mean give it a, a piece of software and find out what sorts of research projects are, is it used in? What, what are the papers that describe how this project's used? Uh, it, for f wh Where do people publish if they're using this software, for, for example? We built the capacity into Scolia to generate software citations. This is kind of a new and, and, and edgy concept. Researchers don't conventionally cite software in the same way that they would cite another research publication. But we're in a day, we're in an age of machine learning and structured data and interconnections between concepts. And if people do cite software, then it's easier for projects like ours or anyone else who's doing machine reading to interconnect software to, to other concepts. Like for example, uh, how many times has given software been used? Uh, is the, what are the de dependencies of software with other other software, uh, what versions of software were used at a given time. If we have better metadata, we can start to track these kinds of things. Uh, how is software developed? What's the list of people who are contributing to software, who, who sponsored it, who's, who's contributed in any way? And if you have citations that demonstrate what kind of software was used at what point in time and what circumstances, then it's easier to track the changes of the software versus the, the point in time of the research. We documented all of this. So data, the functionality, multiplying the impact by uh, network effects, incorporating the functionality into multiple kinds of profiles, the software citations, doing documentations of all this. And I'm going to combine what I have to say about documentation with the last objective, which is to promote diversity to correct disparities or address career disparities in research. The reason why I'm combining documentation and diversity 
into an explanation. I'm, I'm just going to tell you what kind of research or, or multimedia projects we did to document and, and address diversity is in our documentation, diversity issues frequently come up. So these have a lot of overlap. What did we document? So we've got a report about matching GitHub to Wikidata. GitHub is a registry of open source software projects. Wikidata, we have entries on people who do research and software developers, like a profile, a biographical profile. And by mining GitHub in certain ways and pulling out their open data sets and reconciling that, refining that against what's in Wikidata, we were able to, for a certain number of people, to connect GitHub profiles to Wikidata. And that creates a, a model and a precedent for us to better match people to the software they develop or the software that they use. And we, we've got a paper on that. In that paper, we pulled out demographic data from Wikidata. And for example, you can see gender trends Supposing you're doing research in a certain field and you use a certain kind of software, can't researchers come from any background? Sure they can, but it happens that there's gender trends, racial trends, geographic, geographical trends in all kinds of research. And just looking at public information, this report that we have available, you can see some of the some of the issues that came up and there's a lot more to explore this was a technical report we didn't go into the social issues too deeply but there's much that could be said about this data set and there's a lot more data like this this is something that we need to discuss in society uh, who has access to research what gets funded uh, what can you say about the demographics of people doing different kinds of research this was, and that was with uh, the Coleridge Institute. Thanks, Gazem Korkmaz and Ekaterina for do, doing this, this part of the research with us. Here at the University of Virginia, uh, we had some graduate students develop wiki project biography in Wikidata. A wiki project in Wikipedia is the rules and the community forum where people discuss how to manage a certain kind of content. And Wiki project biographies, it's very popular in English Wikipedia, for example. There's so many biographies in Wikipedia, and people go there to coordinate the rules and the guidelines and the best practices. But we didn't have a wiki project biography at all for Wikidata, for the structured data side of things. Well, we established that. And we've got a nice data model of what kinds of data does the Wikidata community think it's appropriate to collect and under what circumstances? And there's a place for debating this and enlisting these and centralizing all conversation about this now. And we also produced some supplementary media to go along, document this Wiki project data model. We've got conference presentation. We've got a nice podcast talking it through. Uh, so there's discussions about this in various places. Those are outcomes of the project. Thank you so much, Lloyd, for, for coordinating, coordinating this with, with other people. Uh, Lloyd, Lloyd C. We have a blog post out. We did a collaboration with something called the Wiki Education Foundation. This is an organization in the United States that facilitates relationships and collaborations between wiki editing and the wikimedia platform usually wikipedia editing in the classroom like for example a professor can tell uh, each each of their students they have 20 students and they tell them all you guys are all going to develop and fact check a wikipedia article wiki education foundation facilitates this lately uh, they do a lot of training with wiki data in the classroom so many schools and students want to learn about how to manage structured data and Wikidata is a, a great route by means of which to come to understand these things. They've got a blog post, uh, it's titled Elevating Diversity, where they talk about some of the demographics that come up when you're profiling researchers. And they've incorporated some examples of researchers into the demos that they use in their training. And they talk about this generally. So thanks, Wiki, uh, Wiki Education, for doing so much, Will Kent, for doing so much to improve the visibility and give credit and recognition to researchers who are women from indigenous backgrounds in the Americas and uh, people in America of African descent. We've got a paper. This is from uh, Cherry Kwok, grad student here at the University of Virginia, Beyond Politics of Correction in Biographical Data Management. What we 
needed to do to help give perspective with software data. So if we're going to address disparities in software use and access to resources, we need to know something about what are the wiki community's norms and ethics in managing biographical data. And Cherry examined a celebrity profile in Wikipedia, noted different kinds of data that were controversial and discussed by the Wikipedia community in producing this article. And I think it makes for interesting reading in general to know how Wikipedia develops its content, what's controversial among wiki editors, and what are the new controversies that are arising in the, the data space about these kinds of things. We have a documentation. So we, we pulled in all this data from all these different sources. How do we know that our data is accurate and complete? What can we do to quality control it? It's a complicated process, but part of the Part of the process is having a data validation system in place. We've got a tool, WSHEX, where for any given collection of data, we can conform it to a model and get reports about the extent to which it conforms to our expectations. And we do this in an automated way. And if you use this automated tool, then you can start having discussions about where your data has gaps, where it's more complete, and think about the significance of this. So thank you, Jose Labra at the University of Oviedo in Spain for producing this paper. Lars Willick Hagen, thank you so much, independent researcher who developed Citation JS. He incorporated a process by means of which we can generate citations from software. This is activism to increase structured data about the use of software in other kinds of research. This is also a model, get this, it's not just about software, but citing all kinds of research resources in software to make them more machine readable. He's got a blog post up on this. Chan Zuckerberg Institute, not, uh, you could say a close collaborator, but also quite independent of this project. They were doing their own thing anyway. Thank you so much, Chan Zuckerberg Institute, uh, Chan, Chan Zuckerberg Initiative for giving us this data set. They matched scholarly publications to mentions of software, their team there. They published a blog post, Impact of Open Science, talking about what does it mean if you have access to the, this information, impact to open science, actually impact to a great many things. There's so much to explore with this data set. I was not able to import the entirety of this data set into Wikidata. I'd really like to do that but you got to have an endpoint to this project. This was a precedent, a pilot. We set some norms. We had to get permission and approval from the wiki community. It takes time to talk about importing all this data and doing it properly without disrupting other parts of the wiki ecosystem, but they've got a really nice data set. It's huge, much bigger than what we imported already. So we started with about 50,000 connections between research projects and software by the, the end of this project, we were up to about 500,000. So tenfold increase in the connections. And 500,000 is a nice, nice data set. You can do a lot of profiling with this. But Chan Zuckerberg has millions of more data points that we'd like to pull in. Uh, it's, it's a biased data set. They also didn't have completeness. There's, there's plenty of more text mining to be done. But it's, it's really nice, and I'd like to import this into the wiki ecosystem. The last thing, I've got a paper draft published with uh, Allison Booth and some other researchers here at the University of Virginia. It's a draft. I need, need more time to work on it. But it's the uh, ethical and social issues in demographically profiling people in Wikipedia and Wikidata. The situation is that Wikipedia, since its establishment, has been putting demographic labels on people. It says when they're born, where they were born, what languages they speak. It might say their gender. That's pretty frequent. There's a lot of activists in Wikipedia that are trying to increase diversity among the biographies. And so we put gender data on people. There's activists for race and for, I'm, I'm part of Wiki LGBT. We put LGBT labels on people when that data is publicly available. But supposing you, you just take the publicly available information that, that seems to be out there and you start putting these labels on Wikipedia biographies and then this information also goes into Wikidata, 
No one ever complained about it when it was in Wikipedia, but some new social and ethical issues arise when you have this content in Wikidata, and we are we have a draft exploring this in a research paper. I'd like to get it get it out next year, but you gotta gotta call it sometime. And uh, very interesting issues arise where you where you say uh, somebody's public about their demographics, but it takes on a new light or a new context when you're aggregating people at scale and starting to label people even in ways that they're they're public about and when they, they put their data out. New social and ethical issues arise. And other people have done this too. So the Library of Congress has a process for this, still in development, interesting developments there. The census does this in different ways. Forget big tech, they've gone absolutely bonkers. Of course, uh, Facebook and Google and Twitter do this in in so many different ways. I have no idea what their ethics are. They're, it, it's it's a bit of a black box with them. But this kind of aggregation and data analysis, it's it's happening at scale in so many ways. At least in the Wiki platform, it's transparent, and we can talk about our process and get community involvement in this. And that's that's what we're doing with this project. So Scully for software. Uh, where I'd like to go in the future with this, there's more software work and development to be done. Would love to do do more of that. Software is just one example of a research resource. Uh, there's other resources that we could pull, pull in, Better Index for all kinds of research. Can we do this with data sets, for example? What about with different kinds of algorithms and AI processes? What about traditional tools for research equipment, cell lines in the bio, biomedical space? Can we connect all these to papers and make, make them all queryable? What about funding? That's something we'd love to have imported into into Wikidata. And we're going to get this. Thanks so much for supporting Scolia. Uh, if you want to check it out, it's 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 there there to see as a live tool for anyone to use. Thanks so much.